All right, welcome back to the second part of this biomechanics lecture on the knee joint. In this video, we're going to discuss the various motions of the knee joint and then also the muscles that produce these motions. Okay, so I'm going to start off with something that's a little bit of a side note, um, but it's very important. Um, there's a, you may have heard of, a, there's a channel on uh, YouTube. There is also a Facebook page. It's called Adam Ruins Everything. And basically the gist of that show, they just have short episodes, there are things that people believe as fact that are actually completely wrong, and the basic idea is this guy named Adam debunks them in kind of a humorous way. Now, one thing that I've actually found, um, the vast majority of people actually believe that the knee joint is a hinge joint, very similar to the elbow joint. Um, the elbow joint is a hinge joint, but if you told Adam that the knee joint is a hinge joint, um, he would actually have to go and make a video debunking that. The point is, is it's most it's very common to believe that the knee joint is a hinge joint, but it is actually not. Um, that's because in everyday life, pretty much we're only used to flexing and extending our knee. But it turns out there's actually two other motions that the knee does, not to a very large extent, and you really don't want to, you know, exercise these movements. Um, most people don't because you might actually injure yourself. But it turns out that the knee joint is actually a condyloid joint. We'll look at that on the next slide. All right. Here are um, some depictions of two of the most common motions of the knee joints, the ones that are the most obvious. Um, the first one is when we decrease the angle of the knee joint. Um, that's called flexion. And remember, flexion, like extension, is going to occur in the sagittal plane. Okay? Um, you can see that flexion generally is going to be able to occur from a completely extended um, state, um, basically to about 150 degrees. Um, we're obviously not going to be able to do a complete flexion to 180 degrees because that would imply that the lower leg distal to the knee would be completely overlapping with the thigh, and that's just not going to happen. Okay. If we go the opposite direction, so say we start out at this 150 and then put our leg out back like this, increasing the angle of the knee joint, that's an extension. Okay. There's actually a very small amount of motion that's allowed past this zero degree point, past the point where the angle is 180 degrees, and that's called hyperextension. Um, you don't want to do this. Um, hyperextension can lead to damage to the knee and injury, and we'll talk more about that in the third video in this lecture. Here are the four motions of the knee joint, and actually C and D right here are actually the reason why the knee joint is not a hinge joint. And some um, sources will call it a modified hinge joint, and the correct term for it is a condyloid joint. And so we've, we've already talked about flexion and extension. Those are the most common and notable movements. Um, Flexion, you can see if we're standing up straight, flexion is going to put the is going to bend the knee such that the calf, the lower leg, goes behind the body, and then extension basically is going to move it back. Okay, remember also flexion is a decrease in the angle of the knee joint in the sagittal plane, while extension is an increase in the angle of the knee joint in the sagittal plane. Okay, we're going to also see that the major muscle groups that promote flexion are going to be on the posterior side of the leg, and those are going to be the hamstring muscles. Okay, And the major muscles promoting extension of the knee are going to be on the anterior side of the leg, and those are going to be the quadricep muscles. C and D right here are internal and external rotation, respectively. Um, the reason, the two reasons that most people don't know about these motions is because, A, if you go to a gym and look at all the machines, there aren't any machines that, that do this. Um, and B, um, these motions don't just occur in any, you know, stance. They don't occur when you're extended. In fact, you have to have some degree of flexion in the knee. Notice her angle right here in the knee is actually decreased. It's in a flex state. So internal and external rotation can only occur to a significant extent 
um, whenever you have your knee flexed. And internal rotation, notice the lower leg is rotated such that the toes point medially and in external rotation you see her lower leg is rotated such that her toes point laterally, okay, away from her midline. Okay, um, we have this other concept that I want to go over very quickly called a Q angle. Um, you may hear about this in some other classes. We may talk about it in class this week. Um, the Q angle is if you actually draw a vertical line up through the knee, basically like this, that's this line, um, and then you bisect it with the angle basically that um, if you draw from basically the hip crest over here all the way down to where it crosses the patella. Um, this angle right here, um, it's generally not very large, but this angle is called the Q angle. Okay. Now it turns out that women have a, high, a greater Q angle than men. This is actually one defining characteristic. And the reason for this is actually because relative to the length of the femur, um, because we know on average that women are shorter than men, so their femurs are obviously shorter on average, but women relative to that have a wider, have wider hips. And so what that causes is this line to come out like this a little bit more, and then it still bisects the patella, and so what you, you'll be able to see is that this Q angle in women is going to be larger, okay? All right, now let's look at the various muscles that control movement of the knee joint. So this slide is all quadricep muscles, and the next slide is all hamstring muscles. Now, as I stated before, the quadricep muscles are all on the anterior side of the leg, and the quadricep muscles are actually going to promote this motion right here, extension of the knee. Okay, so let's look at these. We have four muscles that comprise the quadricep muscles. And sometimes the, the muscles in general combined are called the quadricep femoris, but understand those are four different muscles. The first one is the rectus femoris. We have the vastus intermedius, the vastus lateralis, and the vastus medialis, okay? Um, the quadriceps are only promoting motion in the sagittal plane. Um, they're not, they don't have any role um, in rotational motion. If they were, you'd see transverse here. That's important. These are only sagittal movements, okay? Now, the vastus muscles, the three of them, vastus intermedius, lateralis, and medialis, you can see are only involved with the knee, okay? The rectus femoris, as we mentioned last week, has some other functions as well that deal more with the hip joint. For example, the rectus femoris deals with flexion of the hip and anterior pelvic rotation. So those don't have anything to do with the knee joint. But the rectus femoris, like the other ones here, promote knee extension. And you can see here, these are the anterior muscles. If we go to the hamstring muscles, and there's three of them, um, generally the hamstring muscles are considered to be the bicep femoris, not this one, the popliteus, but also the other two are gonna be the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus, okay? Um, you can see here hamstring muscles in general, or the ones that are in general going to be flexion muscles, knee flexors, are posterior, so they're going to be on the back side, the posterior side of the leg, and they're going to promote flexion. Now, unlike the quadricep muscles, which most of them, not the rectus femoris, but most of them only deal with extension, basically movements in the sagittal plane, these muscles are actually going to have other functions that deal with rotation of the knee. And those are going to be move motion C and D right here, internal and external rotation. But first, let's talk about the, um, the flexing. Okay, So the bicep femoris, the popliteus, semimembranosus, and semitendinosus, all of these are promoting knee flexion. You see that here, knee flexion, knee flexion, knee flexion. What you'll also notice is, with the exception of the popliteus, so the hamstring muscles, bicep femoris, semimembranosus, and semitendinosus, they also promote hip extension. We mentioned that last week, that the hamstring muscles play much more of a pivotal role in hip uh, motion than the quadricep muscles do. You can see here hip extension, hip extension, and hip extension. Okay. 
These muscles also are going to play a role in external, external rotation and internal rotation of the knee. Notice the bicep femoris is also going to promote external rotation of the knee. However, this is the only one that to any significant extent promotes that external rotation of the knee. If we look at the others, they're generally going to all promote internal rotation. Now, the other two hamstring muscles, semimembranosus and semitendinosus, those are just going to straight up promote internal rotation of the knee. The difference between these two and the popliteus is that the popliteus does promote internal rotation of the knee, but it's doing so as the knee is flexing. Okay, so these two don't necessarily require the knee to be currently flexing, meaning it's an active flexion. The popliteus requires that the knee actually be decreasing its angle while it's rotating internally. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Let's just take a quick look at, the, at a couple of pictures here. Um, this is an anterior view of a person's right leg. You can see these are the anterior muscles, as I mentioned, the quadricep muscles. Um, and I think the names are actually um, fairly straightforward. The, in terms of the vastus muscles, the medialis is the most medial, intermedius is intermediate, and the lateralis is the most lateral. Um, you can see the largest one, for the most part, is the rectus femoris, which kind of lies superficially to the vastus intermedius. The vastus intermedius is going to be under the rectus femoris, okay? And generally speaking, if you're, if you're doing knee extensions on the machine in the gym, and as you're extending your, your knee upwards, if you were to put your hand on your leg to feel your muscles, you're feeling your rectus femoris, Okay, that's the muscle that pe people typically are associating with the quads, but there's three others as you can see, okay? And on the posterior side, again, this is still the person's right leg, but we're looking at the posterior muscles. We have here the semitendinosus, the bicep femoris, and the semimembranosus, okay? Um, you can see here the bicep femoris is a little bit more on the lateral side, and on more the medial side, we have the semitendinosus and the semimembranosus, okay? So hopefully this gives you a good view and understanding of the muscles and the various motions. Thank you for watching this video.